Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we have another experiment for you guys and that is vector thrusting with hydrogen thrusters. Alright so quick question is can you do vector thrust with hydrogen thrusters? The simple answer is yes and the more difficult question is how compact. Alright so looking at hydrogen thrusters initially large grid versions for vector thrust is fairly simple because all you need to do is plug in an advanced rotor into the ports which is available on the sides for the large grids large hydrogen thruster and of course if you wanted to do a small large grid hydrogen thruster all you gotta do is tack on a conveyor junction onto an advanced rotor you need the advanced rotor because you need the hydrogen to go through the ports and connect into the thruster itself. The large grid versions are pretty simple. You can easily make them. They're kind of compact in some ways and there's not much to do from there. So if we look at other items, of course, we could do like a conveyor tube here into an advanced rotor, um, into a small large grid hydrogen thruster. And you can also use like a cargo container and anything with a a port or a hole in that sense where you can connect the thruster here and into the advanced rotor but when we talk about small grid that's when it gets a little more difficult because when you have an advanced rotor for a small grid it is rather large for a small grid rover or ship because it has that 3x3 three three type of port on the tail end of it where you connect the thrusters of course you can always tack on the large thrusters such as this um, to pass from advanced rotor to the thruster so it'd be very similar to um, putting a junction here in some ways tack on the large hydrogen thruster for small grid so it'll look something like that so it's pretty chunky and clunky when we look at the large version of the thrusters so if you want to take a look at a few quick examples um, as you see it, this is all small grid. That's a small grid advanced rotor. That's a small grid conveyor junction. And you can connect a small thruster into the smaller portholes here. So you can do vector thrusting that way. Again, it's clunky because you have this big old piece here that you need in order just to get that thruster here. So we tried other things, which we have a medium cargo container that has a large port and a small port. So you can always convert this into a vector thrust type of situation but again it is clunky because it uh, has a fairly big um, block here for small grid and of course i think one of the more compact way to do it is with using a connector the connector has a large port in the back here and of course the connector is front and it has small ports throughout each side right so you can always throw one thruster a hydrogen thruster a small one and use that as vector thrusting which is which is pretty interesting in some ways but of course if you didn't want to go the route of rotors you can use hinges and you can use hinges going up and down left and right so that when you vector thrust it will kind of move like so and you know get that vector thrust working However, it is a little bit of a wobbly thing when you use when you use hinges as vector thrust. It does work, but it does wobble a lot because it has to shift from left to right or up and down in that sense in order for it to work. We can always do that with large um, hydrogen thrusters in a small grid also with hinges because you can always use the 3x3 hinge here connected with the large hydrogen thruster here. So that's always a possibility as well. Um, so of course we want to take a look at other pieces that we can possibly convert from a large port to the advanced rotor into small um, port hole, ports of holes so we can throw in the small hydrogen thrusters in a more compact way. So this here is an O2H2 generator which there is just two ports right over here behind this piece and one over here. So I just connected these junctions and put a thruster here and that way you can get your rotation going from that or you can do it a little bit different and do it this way uh, which is just connected here and then um, this is connected right in the middle with nothing 
connect it in terms of ports, um, but we put the thruster there. So it's just slightly compact. So this version here is not too bad because it is three, pretty much three long or three by three, right? So it's three across and then three, so three up and down right here. So that's three by three. Oh, yeah, that's, that's three by three in that sense. And the more compact way I was thinking was going to be the connector piece because this is too wide, as you see here. But the only problem is this is um, four wide because of the thruster. But it, but it's compact because it's only too wide um, from left to right. Vertically, it's just a little longer in that sense. So how can we put this all together? I would say fairly simple. We created a few hydrogen um, based small uh, few hydrogen based small grid ships here with the uh, different functions or the different pieces so i have here the connector version um with the hybrid of the hinge so this one it looks it looks oh, they all look kind of funky because we have we put a large hydrogen um tank here um just to get as much hydrogen hydrogen as possible i am in creative mode so i do get um a free fill of all hydrogen but if you can fill this up um, in survival, I think it'll work perfectly fine. And you'll have a lot of hydrogen um, stored because it's a large grid. That's because it's a large hydrogen tank. So pretty much putting a vector thrust script here, right? Which is, which we're using vector thrust two, which we usually use vector thrust two for all vector thrusting. And it's fairly simple, put copy to editor, um, press OK, not much to do here. Recompile, run, and you have to use your program block. Mine is program block 2. Put in your toolbar, hit run, and you type in jetpack. So that way you can easily fly up and down, left, right, in all different directions in that sense fairly easily. So if I unlock myself, you'll see here the hinge piece is on the small ports because there was no way to get forward and backwards momentum as easy as possible. So we did it that way. And the up and down piece is, and even left and right, is also, it's connected to a connector on both sides. So we have our up and down motion here, as you see. And also it works for left and right. And the hinge works great for forward, backwards, and also left and right as well. So you do get a lot of thrust here with the uh, small hydrogen thrusters on a small grid ship like this. So that kind of all works out. And, and yes, the answer, yes, you can do vector thrust with hydrogen thrusters. The, again, the real big question is how compact. This seems to be the most compact that I can possibly get it with using a hinges and also a connector um, in that sense, because once we played around with other ones, uh, my forward and backwards, left and right, is it's most likely it's going to be kept as hinges because it has a small ports here on the sides of the hydrogen. And then, of course, in the back, that's where we want to do an up and down motion for the most part. And connecting a medium cargo, as we mentioned before, is a bit clunky and a little long. So that's what it will look like. It works fine. It just looks a little clunky. Same thing with this conveyor junction for small grid. It's uh, huge. It's clunky. And it doesn't look as great. Um, this doesn't look the best either, but <laughs> a little bit better than these two. And then, of course, we, we put the O2H2 generator, which is a little bit more compact. So I, I would probably go with this design too. The good thing about this is that you are going to be able to get some ice and throw it in here to generate your hydrogen that way too. Um, although this thing already has one on the side, but now you have two um, and you have the hydrogen thruster going up and down in that sense. So I would favor probably this design and this connector design um, in that case. Of course, it could be built a lot better than what I have now, but in terms of um, my current design, those are the two ones I would favor in terms of a little bit more compact. And I was just messing around. And you can also use a cockpit for this case. So with this current design that I have, if we were to unlock, you see here the cockpit in the back can actually function the same exact way. Go up, down, left, right, 
<laughs> because it does have a large port in the bottom or on the bottom of the cockpit right here and then you also have two small ones in the back and also one in the front here which you could throw on some hydrogen thrusters on there to get your momentum going which was a f bit of an interesting thing <laughs> to do uh, it doesn't really work out that great because it looks kind of funky but it does work <laughs> in that way um there is one final thing you can do as well and that is this yeah because the large hydrogen thrusters does have small ports and a large port we can definitely convert it as well um to get the large hydrogen thruster to work that's a different story so i was playing around with it a little bit and i couldn't really get it to work so as you see here it has the up and down from it and left and right and we can also go forward and backwards because we have the um, thrusters on the side over there uh, it's not on hinges for whatever reasons just to play around with this um, specific design currently and not sure why that's not locking all right there you go so there is a way to get it to work sometimes it seems that we need to it depends on how you put it on so I was playing around with it and if I put this one on first right it usually works once you put in the script for a subgrid thruster so if I were to go into my programming block and edit and browse script and use the um, subgrid uh, subgrid um, script which is the whip subgrid thruster manager which works okay so I just place this here and then hit run and or recompile and run as long as you have your cockpit named reference or you can change it all in the script if that's if you fancy that instead but yeah once you put that on usually for whatever reasons it works where I can go forward with the thruster but I think because I have um, the script here that's running which is the the vector 2 um, ve yeah the vector vector thrust 2 on which is causing the issue if I turn it off, it's still not. I don't. I still don't think it's gonna work. But I did get it to work at one point. But once I loaded up the vector two, uh, vector thrust two script on here, so I can you know vector thrust, it just canceled out on here. But either way, it's no. It, it's kind of no point of putting this to go forward. But um, it's too complicated to really make it work. You just gotta. It's it's all about placement and timing of your scripts to make that part uh, work really really well. All right, so other than that, I decided to do two more random things with it <laughs> just to pr proof of concept that it does work um, and how compact you can really, really get um, your hydrogen um, thrusters to be under vector thrust um, light, basically. So here's one option. I try to make this as simple as possible. And this one here, as you see, it is... <clears throat> It is sitting on two advanced rotors on connectors with the thrusters to do the vector thrusting here. Right? So you have one in the rear, one in the bottom because there's a porthole on the bottom of this cockpit. And we decided to use small batteries around the areas that we can't fill in. Um, so you're going to see on top and also in between these small hydrogen tanks here. with Which is all connected from the cockpit and also to... The O2 H2 generator here. The biggest problem is you're probably not going to have a lot of hydrogen using two small hydrogen tanks for this kind of project, um, but it's hard to tell because I'm in creative mode, haven't tried it in survival mode to see how well that kind of works. But you can always tack, make it a little bit longer and put in a little bit more of your hydrogen tanks. It's going to make it a little bit longer in terms of the ship itself, but as you see here, this is kind of the most compact you can kind of get your. Um, vector thrust with hydrogen thrusters so this is not too bad of a design but I'm sure somebody or somebody watching this can get it even more compact and possibly use a different type of material that has a large grid port and also a small grid port but yeah feel free to let me know um, if you have a better idea on how to make this a lot more compact and if you have a pretty cool design <clears throat> that can um, use vector thrust such as this here. 
And my last bit of piece that I just tried to mess around with because it is a connector that I was using. This is the the one the first one I like using, which was the um, the ship connected to an advanced rotor to a connector. So I connected other connectors with the same design, where you have a hydrogen tank with the hinge thrusting and also a connector in the very back of it with a little bit of a thrusting piece on the very bottom as you see there and i first tried it with just you know the original ship merged into this piece here so too long right of a train and then i got bored so i added three long in the train and you'll see one in the back right there i'm in flames rolling around because i crashed it but this was a design just for fun to see if it kind of works out and guess what it works out pretty well, but it does flip a lot, as you see here. Um, it worked out initially. I don't know why it's freaking out as much as it is now, but in the beginning, oh, it's not working at all. It's just gonna blow up. At one point, when I was when I was building this and testing it, it flew up in the air, stayed up and hovered, and I was able to fly left and right. But it did wobble a lot because it had too many rotors connections and stuff like that um, for whatever reason during this current session it just decided not to really work and just um, hit the floor in that sense but yep this was another test which failed and you'll see it's just floating around like this for no apparent reason <laughs> all right so of course last but not least in some ways um, i did try to do other designs um, to make it as small as possible so we have a, a design such as this so this one has your horizontal thrusting and this one has your vertical thrusting here so it's more of a vertical ship in this sense uh not the prettiest thing in the world but it kind of functional as you see here it's not terrible a little wobbly but it does fly so it's not bad it's not as compact as the other one but um in terms of horizontal length yes it's more compact but vertical not so much but even if i flipped it over to match it it, it, I think this is a little bit longer and that's only because of the uh, kind of like the landing gears in that sense right so that was the initial design so I swapped it over to this one here which is a basic vertical thrusting up and also your horizontal thrust without having to move much because we technically don't need a down right because gravity will do that for us and when I built something like this, for whatever reasons, the ship is not necessarily hovering, it's dropping. Um, not too sure why, but that's a bit of an issue here. But we do have um, vertical thrust, as you see here, or vector thrusting, as you see here, where we can go up uh, left and right fairly easily with the advanced rotor connection on top. So that's pretty cool in that sense. So if you want to do a different version instead of more lengthy horizontally, you have a lengthy one going vertical in this form and fashion. So again, let me know in the comments below if you have a better design, if you have a cool co compact design that you can use, or let me know also what other items small grid um, specifically has a large port hole and a small hole for these small hydrogen thrusters. But this experiment, pretty much the answer is yes, you can vector thrust with hydrogen thrusters, um, even with small hydrogen thrusters like this. And how compact can you get it? Again, I think you have kind of two options for, for something compact, and that's a connector or an O2H2 generator in that sense. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video today, this experiment, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up, like the video, if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell, and of course, feel free to drop a comment down below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.